For the past six months, we've been traveling in the Western United States to visit around 20 ski resorts. And it's had its challenges like batteries dying, propane running out, our black tank freezing, the list goes on. We've camped out in temperatures anywhere from 32 degrees all the way to negative 35 degrees during a polar vortex in Wyoming. And during that time, we've learned a whole bunch on how to keep your camper from freezing and actually staying warm during the night. So here's our short list of tips on how to stay warm during a polar night and to keep all of your tanks and your camper from freezing. Also, Morgan and I pretty much 99% of the time boondock. We're rarely at a campsite, maybe just for a break here and there. So we kind of have to do things a little bit differently than those who might be at a campsite most of the time. One thing that doesn't change is emptying your freshwater tank. Um, our other tanks are just kind of like half full at this point, but I'll get to that in a sec. We gotta make sure that our freshwater tank is empty so it doesn't expand and break the tank. Once we empty our tanks, we still make sure we have water. So we fill up two of these six gallon tanks that we got from Walmart. And then we also make sure we have these two gallon bags filled, um, like they're water storage bags. Make sure we have these filled as well. I like these preferably because I can actually lift these. These are really heavy and they're not very girl friendly. A little portable Jackery battery like this, I highly recommend getting for a couple of reasons. One, at night when we don't have the generator running, battery power and battery consumption and conservation is huge. You know, surviving a winter night, right? So with this, we can plug in a heated blanket, we can charge our phones, basically any device that we need overnight. We can just charge through this. We don't have to waste the battery that's coming from the 12 volt on the front of the camper. This has saved us at truck stops where we're spending the night so many times, I can't even count. So highly recommend getting these, money well spent. I've made a separate video about this, but our solar battery is huge for when we go to sleep. This pretty much powers everything internally and keeps our 12 volt battery on the front charge, which runs our refrigerator, our furnace, internal lights, anything like that. This keeps it alive at night. Now to prevent our tanks from actually freezing, especially the black tank, a trusty bag of salt. Whenever it gets to probably like the teens, that's when everything starts to freeze because we do have internal heat that goes through the underbelly. Once it gets below that, the cold really starts to create problems and we need to make sure that like, okay, if we're changing campsites, we need to dump, we really need to be able to, right? So we throw some of this salt in there. We've seen that that works a little bit better than using RB antifreeze in the beginning. Um, so trusty bag of salt, never hurt nobody. Always have it on hand when you're in the winter. It'll be good to go. We talked about this earlier, but our generator really does take up probably like 90% of our energy needs keeping that maintained, making sure that we have a lot of power to operate every single device that we have is super important. Goose and checking it out. All right, let's talk about heat. We have an internal heating system with a furnace, running heat through ducts to our bedroom, the bathroom, and our living room, as well as one little duct that goes underneath to the underbelly. That is powered by pretty standard two propane tanks here, but we always carry a third uh, for emergencies or if we were to run out in the middle of the night, I can just throw this on. We always have three ready to go. This one, uh, the extra is always full. Another really nice little gadget that I recommend everyone get is these little gauges. This helps me tremendously figure out when I'm gonna need to go into town and get propane, minimize trips in there. This one's getting low, so I'll probably have to run out in town soon. Now I spoke earlier about the solar the solar powers this battery as well as all of our outlets. So in the middle of the night when we're not getting a solar charge from the panels that are actually on the top that are charging this during the day, we have the solar that's running power into this, keeping this going. Now, it, I, I really do think that this is like the power epicenter, this little deep cycle 12 volt battery. It's a piece of junk, but it runs everything essentially. So it's imperative that we actually keep it alive, especially at night when it gets to like negative 35 degrees like we had in Wyoming. There's a lot of sun that we'll be getting today that's gonna be able to power this battery. We'll be perfectly fine for the storm and we'll be good to go. Snow starting to fall and all I can think of is that scene in Lord of the Rings where he goes, so it begins. So it begins. Free. Well. The weather channel lied. <laughs> Still insanely beautiful, but we only got about four inches, um, which is awesome. But we were expecting like a foot or more 
uh, when we went to bed last night. So um, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't the blizzard that we were expecting, but it still got very cold. So all in all, there's not much to it. Links to anything mentioned in this video will be in the description of this video. And keep in mind that every camper, every van, every rig is gonna be different. So do your research, see what's gonna work for you, and don't go out into a winter storm if you think you don't have the supplies to actually stay warm during the night. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. We're Jack and Morgan, we're traveling the country in our travel trailer. So make sure to subscribe, and we'll have a new video out every single week. See you then.